Before you watch this episode of our City Current radio show, I want to invite you to join City Current's e-learning and online personal development platform called Growth Current. I'm Jeremy Park, host of the City Current radio show and CEO of City Current. Growth Current is your exclusive ticket to attend virtual events with global thought leaders, national guest speakers, and experts who can help you grow personally and professionally. It gives you access to success secrets, lessons learned, learning modules, and so much more. Being online, you can join us from anywhere in the world. Subscriptions are only $8 a month, or you can do bulk subscriptions for your team. Check out growthcurrent.com to learn more and to join us in our efforts to power the good. And now, on to the show. Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to be with our next guest. We're talking about Team Bridges. We're joined by John Grizzle. He is the director of Team Bridges. And John, let's start. You guys do amazing work. We've had a chance to uh, see you in action and be a part of the good you do with team building. But let's start with just very simply, how are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for, thanks for having me on this morning. Absolutely. So give us a little backstory when you talk about what a normal year would be and obviously in person and the ability to team build and climb the wall and all sorts of stuff. Give us what a normal year would look like for Team Bridges. So uh, ultimately, we're a department of Bridges USA, the, the nonprofit. Most people, when they hear Bridges, they think of the Bridge Builder Program, which is our youth program for uh, seventh through 12th grade, which incidentally, the uh, the applications are now open for that. The deadline for uh, that will be February 19th. So if you live with or know of a seventh, rising 7th through 12th grader, uh, please check out that. You can go to Bridges USA and, and do that. But uh, Bridges also works with adults. A lot of people don't know that, but that's what, uh, that's what we do at Team Bridges. We offer professional development, leadership training, and team building experiences. And a normal, a normal year for us, we, uh, we have the facility uh, that has an indoor and outdoor rock wall and high ropes course that we use in our programming. And so a lot of times uh, people will come to us uh, or we can go to them either way. And uh, we do, uh, just depending on what the client wants, we'll do customized events. And uh, in a normal year, we uh, you know, have busy season and, and slower season, but we're running groups and doing, you know, different activities that will focus on communication, trust, leadership, and, and things like that. But it has definitely been a different year for us uh, in 2020. Well, we'll talk about the pivots and the virtual, obviously, team building that you're doing now. But for those on, you know, the radio show side, for those that can see you on the video, you've got a picture behind you um, of the rock wall and a little bit of the facilities. But Paint a picture of what the facilities is like because Bridges, you have a, a beautiful state-of-the-art facility and you walk in and you go to the right and you see the, the big rock wall and that's obviously an opportunity and you have climbing days and nights and things typically. And then you have up in the kind of the, the rafters, so to speak, you have a, a whole challenge course. And so paint the picture, kind of illustrate what the, the course looks like, if you will. Yeah, the, um, you know, when you walk into the building, it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of angles, the way it was designed, uh, there's very few right angles in the building, except for where the floor meets the wall. When that's intentional design, it's uh, designed to stimulate the prefrontal cortex of the brain. So uh, even, you know, the building, how it was designed was really um, around, centered around experiential education. And so when you walk into the, the main high adventure hall, that's where you see the rock wall. Uh, that's where you see the things hanging from the ceiling, which is is our high ropes course. A lot of times people come in, they're like, hey, does that stuff come down? And uh, the answer is no, we, we go up to it. Um, you're always clipped in to something, you know, there's no point where you're just not clipped in. So if you if you were to slip and fall, you're, you're just going to be sitting down in a harness. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really fascinating building. The, the building or the, the course itself was uh, designed for the building. And so we're, we're uh, one of few indoor uh, courses. Um, and it's great. And, and one of the things it allows us to do is to do programming, even when it's cold, even when it's raining. And, uh, and so that's great. But there's a lot of different elements um, that, that you can do when you are on the, the ropes course. We generally don't do the full course. We usually choose a section of the course um, whenever we have uh, different groups come through. You mentioned you work a lot with corporate groups, and I mentioned at the onset we've had a chance to go through and, um, and work with you as well and bring our team in. Talk us through that process in terms of what it's like on the front end to talk to the team and kind of figure out what their goals and objectives are, put together the program, 
the experience. Walk us through that process. So we start usually with having the, the client fill out a needs assessment form. That gives us an idea of what are you wanting to accomplish, how many people, how long of an event. Uh, and from there, we just customize uh, an event that's going to best meet the needs. Like what are your ma major focus areas? Um, and so we'll, we'll select activities that are going to best uh, focus on, on those things. Um, we do offer, you know, the rock wall and ropes course as an option. Some people are super excited about that. Others uh, are not, and, and that's okay. Um, you know, we uh, operate under a philosophy of challenge by choice, which means we're not going to make anybody do anything they don't want to do. But um, we'll often start out the day with just something light, kind of an icebreaker or energizer, just to kind of get people warmed up and ready for the day. Um, and then we move into some kind of group norming where we set the, set the tone for the day. Like, hey, you know, what do you need from yourselves and from each other to get the most out of the experience? Uh, and then we'll move into some of the challenges or initiatives, problem solving activities. Um, most are designed to be fun. Some are designed to be frustrating and, and that's okay. Um, you know, and I usually encourage people to think about it. You could look at what we're doing as a bunch of silly games and, and they are designed to, to in general be fun, but usually there's a deeper purpose to what we're doing and just really encourage people to, um, you know, you, you get out of it what you put into it. And so after each of the challenges or, or activities, we'll take some time to process through, um, you know, make that connection between the activity, this fun game or challenge we did. How does that relate to work? How does that relate to school? And, um, you know, what are some things you can take from that? If it's talking about communication. All right. So you, you communicated one way in this activity. How does that translate to when you get back to the office? Uh, what are some things you can take from that? Um, and then generally after that, we'll go to the rock wall and ropes course. And then that, that just adds another element uh, to things. As you mentioned, it's been an interesting, obviously a challenging year, but you know, when you talk about kind of the game side, the communication side, the connection side, all of that I think translates very well over to the virtual environment. Obviously not as easy to duplicate uh, the rock wall and the challenge course, but go ahead and talk about the pivot to virtual and, and obviously what the pandemic has brought for Team Bridges. Well, before, before the pandemic, I think I'd may, maybe been on two, one Zoom call. I um, was not familiar with, with the virtual world or the platform. And so it was a bit of a shock to, to my system, to our system, uh, because so much of what we do is interpersonal and, um, you know, really uh, requires close proximity with some of the activities that, that we do. And so, you know, a lot of when, when everything went down, it was, what are we going to do? How are we going to do what we do? Uh, how's that going to translate virtually? And so we really spent some time leaning on uh, some of the other leaders in the industry that were putting out content and, and saying like, hey, you know, here's some ideas and, you know, try to figure out how to translate some of the activities we did. And some activities translated really well. Um, some of them, we just had to kind of learn new things. And but the goal still being, you know, how do we continue to make that connection? Uh, how do we do these things without um, compromising, you know, quality programming? And so that's been definitely one of the challenges. Uh, but we have found, especially as we, we spent some time uh, just kind of learning, uh, we spent the first two months just really just consuming what other uh, leaders were putting, uh, putting out there for, for people. And then we would practice. We, had, we set up some quarantine times where we encouraged our staff to, uh, you know, uh, the, the staff of Bridges as a whole to make some tea or coffee and come join us, you know, because we, we missed that element of being in the office and just spending time together. And so it gave, it gave people an opportunity to see each other uh, and to connect in some meaningful ways. It gave us some uh, time to practice some of these things we were learning and, and also served for the, uh, for the youth department to, to learn some new ways that they can engage uh, the, the youth that they work with as well. Give me something, and obviously just the, the, kind of transfer over in the use of technology, that in and of itself is a learning experience and learning lesson, but give me something that you've learned in this process that you think is going to make Team Bridges stronger. I think that we will we will continue to do virtual experiences even uh, once we're back to the new normal. And I think that this, it, it opens up some possibilities uh, you know, not just working with people in the mid south. I mean, we've we've worked with people from from out of town as well. But this will uh, just give us opportunities to to work with more people, but also uh, a little more flexibility as well. Uh, some uh, actual follow up activity or follow up uh, 
events and stuff, you know, there, there's easier ways to do that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good challenge for us. It's actually even for me. So I've been in this industry for 13 years full time now. And uh, it, it's really challenged me to kind of think outside the box and, and, you know, change the way I've always done things. And so that it's been good from, from that, from that uh, aspect. What advice would you give or what tip? Because obviously now, you know, for you being in this space of engaging virtually, so being a, a, a moderator of sorts, a convener and trying to, you know, draw people in and gather virtually and still connect. What's, what's one tip that you've kind of learned in this process that you would share with others, especially with businesses and organizations that are trying to connect their teams and, you know, especially with all the Zoom meetings and everything else and just trying to get people on and connect. What's, what's a bit of advice you would offer on that to get the best out of that, that opportunity? That's a great question. And the first thing that comes to mind is getting people moving, Um, you know, for so, especially when this first started, like it was a shock to my system, just sitting in front of a screen. And I think, you know, after sitting and looking at a computer for so long, it, 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 you know, it, it can be challenging. And so, you know, even just doing a little thing, one of the, one of the activities we do is called go find. And it's just, Hey, go find an item that represents your personality or go find an item that um, has helped you through this pandemic. You've got 30 seconds, go. And then everybody, you know, can go find something and, and hold it up to the camera. Like that's just a, even just, if you're in a meeting, that's a great, you know, quick way to, to just stop what you're doing and, and re-engage the brain in different ways. Uh, I think yeah. that that's a, and, I mean, I say, and that's a great way, you know, when you talk about even the storytelling aspect after of sharing like why, you know, then that gets people to engage because not only are they going to find something about their personality or, you know, something that's helped comfort them or whatever it is, then sharing why allows them to connect at a deeper level too. So that's a, yeah, that's a great one. Walk, walk us through how we can help because I mean, obviously, uh, you know, for organizations, for um, groups that just want to, to be able to engage Team Bridges, that's one piece of this. And obviously, once things return to normal, that's another piece of this. But, but what are some ways we can help and be a part of Team Bridges? Well, one, one thing is anytime you bring a team to, to work with us, you're ultimately supporting the, the organization as a whole. So all the revenue that we make goes back into the Bridge Builder program and just uh, and just helps that continue. So um, that's that's a great way. Um, also, uh, checking out some of the, the content that we're putting out. So we have a, a video blog. We have other social media sites. And so, uh, you know, liking us on Facebook, uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. Those are some ways that are just easy. Um, you know, if you're, if you don't want to actually bring a group and, and do some work, um, but if you do, like, we're happy to do, uh, you know, something that's quick, as quick as like a 15 minute, just jump in, uh, or, or do a more uh, extensive experience, like three hour, uh, virtual experience. Uh, and then even when we get back to the office and, uh, open the facility again, you know, bringing your group and, and doing some, uh, professional development. Uh, but those are a couple of ways that, that, you know, you could help us. That would be great. Give us a little teaser on Card Talk. Okay, so Card Talk is uh, your number one resource for team games and challenges using regular playing cards. And so I, I'm a fan of uh, playing cards uh, just for, uh, there's so many uses to them, but it's designed to be a free resource for, for uh, educators, for coaches, HR directors, or just anyone looking to engage a team. Uh, and playing cards are very cheap. There's a lot of expensive team building and professional development materials out there, but playing cards are readily accessible and there's just so much you can do with them. And so uh, the last three episodes have been focused on virtual. So if you are leading a virtual meeting and you're like, I'm looking for something fun to do, that would be a a, a interesting resource to check out. Um, But that's Card Talk. We try to put out an episode uh, every two months. And where can everyone find that? Where, where, Where can they find Card Talk? So we have a YouTube channel, Team Bridges YouTube channel. And then wrap up because you, you, you've you mentioned it throughout, but I do want to kind of land on this a little bit more is the fact that what you do supports bridges and bridge builders. And so give a little bit more context around bridge builders and the transformation that goes on with the youth through bridges. 
Bridge Builders is our, you know, what we're most widely known for. And so we work with 7th through 12th grade, uh, and it focuses on leadership, uh, diversity, and community transformation. Um, and so rising 7th through 12th graders, uh, this past year was actually a virtual conference. We are hoping to be back in person uh, this this summer, but uh, even if not, the, the virtual uh, conference this past year uh, was was really well done and, and we got a lot of positive feedback from that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a, a, a really great program that I would encourage anyone to, to check out. You can go to Bridges USA, uh, check out our website. You can also just Google Bridge Builders and, and uh, that should pop up. But uh, it's a program that I would highly encourage anyone with uh, with youth uh, in those grades uh, or anybody that knows, uh, you know, children that in the seventh through 12th grade range that uh, it, it's a, uh, really positive and uh, transformative uh, experience. Absolutely. We'll wrap up with your contact information. Where do we go to learn more about Team Bridges? So we have a website as well, teambridges.org. And so that'll uh, give you a, just a general idea. And if you're looking to get some information about a group, you can just click on the needs assessment form. Uh, and that gives us what we need to kind of best answer your questions, give you a quote and, uh, you know, lets us know how many people you're wanting to bring and, and things like that. And you can also follow us on social media. We've got the Facebook, uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and it's at Team Bridges 477. Well, John, thank you for all you and your team do. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeremy. It's good to see you again.